Are you going to bite me? Oh, bite. Hey there. I'm Rob, and today I'm going to be talking about the submission guidelines that are posted on Dark Horse's website uh, for people who are proposing comic book stories. If you're not aware, Dark Horse is one of the largest comic book publishers in the United States and one of the largest publishers of creator-owned comic books. Um, similar to Image Comics, which I recently posted a video about this that a lot of people have been watching and commenting on, which I really appreciate. Um, Dark Horse is like one of two large publishers that's always accepting open submissions for new materials. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of people out there that are looking for this information. Just gonna talk about my observations and a little bit of a device of what you know Dark Horse asks for and I believe is looking for in a comic book project. So this, you know, this isn't just the steps, which are very simple, and I'll give them to you right now if I don't have much of your time. Um, Dark Horse will accept art samples, which they leave um, criteria for on their website. And beyond that, really, they're just looking for a log line, a synopsis, an outline, and six consecutive pages of artwork. S pitching a comic is like, it's a very simple ask at the end of the day. Um, and I'll get into that, like why, why it's so simple. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's like a small task and, you know, is just something like frivolous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, please leave them in the comments. If I, you know, if I don't address them in, um, in this video, I think just for the sake of time, again, I'm really just going to be talking about what's in front of me. Um, but I'd love to give more context over time for these publishers, what, what kind of materials they put out. Um, if there's any topics that like you're interested in, please let me know. Um, but I'm, I'm having fun doing this. So i um, just going to just going to kind of stream of conscious it and uh, we'll see how this turns out. So first of all, if you go to Dark Horse's website, um, it's real like it's really no secret. They make they don't make uh, it very difficult to find their submission guidelines. It's right there in the footer of their web page. Um, Dark Horse has been around since the '80s. Hellboy, um, the Alien versus well Alien and Predator franchises, and Star Wars was really where they made their mark. So like licensing was a huge thing for them. And they've done other comic books too, like um, the Umbrella Academy, which obviously is on, you know, got picked up on Netflix, I believe, Sin, Sin City, um, and then uh, like Fight Club too, you know. So it varies between licensed projects and original projects. So first of all, when you get to the submission guidelines on Dark Horse's website. Dark Horse accepts two types of unsolicited submissions, art samples or story series proposals from writer artists or writer and artist teams. Dark Horse does not accept any submissions that include material generated by computer artificial intelligence programs. Good to know. So yeah, whether you are um, both the writer and illustrator of your comic book or you are a writer artist team, um, Dark Horse will, will accept your material. And they do accept art samples, it sounds like, on their own. Um, you know, it's it's possible they'll attach you to a project, but they don't just take story proposals, and Image doesn't just take story proposals either. If you go to Image's website, uh, they will accept inking, pencil, lettering, coloring samples. Like, they are looking for production artists, which is like, it's good to know that uh, if you are an artist who's just like looking for an opportunity um, to cut your teeth, this is you know an option available to you. Um, I would make sure that your art style is similar to what these brands are putting out, you know, and like and has the look and feel of of the type of comics that are on brand with Dark Horse and Image. Not that there isn't a variety, but like. Um, you know, you would just want to make sure that, like, you are at that that level that they're expecting at this point. And if you're not, that's fine. You know, just keep just keep honing your craft over time. For, for multiple reasons, 
um, no computer or artificially generated artwork. Um, they get into this later uh, that they don't accept pitches for their own licensed storylines. So you couldn't be like, hey, I want to do Alien versus Star Wars. Um, I think that's such a cool idea and I would love to write that for you. They just they just don't accept uh, pitches like that. And alternatively, you know, um, a property that maybe like could have potential to get picked up, but they haven't touched on yet. They're not accepting anything. They don't own the licensing to. They don't own the full rights to. Um, and such is the nature of AI that, uh, not to get too in the weeds on this, but those models are trained by, you know, observing other artwork and uh, it's just not something they're interested in for, for any legal liability or ethical liability purposes. They won't entertain it. So don't do yourself a disservice. <laughs> don't break the rules. Um, they, they won't have any interest in it. Uh, submitting art samples. Do not send submission. Uh, do not send a submissions agreement with art samples, only with story series proposals. Make sure your last name is a part of the name of each of the files you send. That's, you know, uh, you want to make sure that they know how to find you. Make sure your full name and email address are included in the text or on the images that you send. Text files aside from your email should be PDFs or Microsoft Word readable files, RTF files. Um, image area for each art scan should be 1,000 pixels by 1,500 pixels high. JPEG or PDF formats are preferred. If you are sending inking samples, make sure you also send a copy of the original pencils. Makes sense. They want to see, you know, how you applied your art and like what your, you know, your style is. Make sure your submission is under 15 megabytes in size. Send art samples only to D. Uh, DH art submissions at darkhorse.com. Submitting story or series proposals. So now here's where we're really getting into the meat of it. Due to the volume of submissions we receive, you should expect to hear from Dark Horse Editor regarding your submission, uh, your submitted only if an editor wishes to hire you for work. This makes sense. Um, image mentions that, like, if you don't hear back within a month, just assume that they've moved on from the property. You know, I'm, I'm sure if this is something they're interested in, they'll get back to you pretty quickly. Um, all unsolicited story series proposals must have a full creative team on board. Writer-only proposals will not be reviewed. So to submit a proposal to Dark Horse, the following items must be included. Signed submission agreement. This is actually different than images um, requirements, but... Dark Horse has the highest regard for creators and for the ownership of original properties, and this agreement should in no way be construed as license for Dark Horse to appropriate your creations. The agreement protects Dark Horse from any liabilities involving coincidental similarities to works in progress or other submissions. Story proposals arriving without a signed agreement will be deleted without review. Download a copy of the agreement here. So basically, when you submit, I mean, they could just as easily have said, like, by sending this to us, you accept the the submission agreement. But basically, they just need you to sign off and say, like, you know, I'm not holding Dark Horse liable to this. Um, you know, they're not going to steal your, your IP because Dark Horse has plenty of submissions coming their way each and every day. Most, you know, a lot of stories have overlap. Um, again, they're, they're not really just like looking to source free ideas. Um, they have plenty of talent coming their way for it, but they're just saying like, hey, if <clears throat> if something comes out in the future and it's similar to your idea, you know, that is the gamble you're taking, but it's not really a gamble because we're talking about a very large, credible <laughs> brand that's been doing this for a very long time. Uh, a new agreement must be submitted with each new proposal and must be signed by all involved creators and copyright holders. Please note that Dark Horse does not review unsolicited scripts, story ideas, or proposals pertaining to properties currently published by Dark Horse or any property not owned by the submitter. Such material will be destroyed without review. It's funny that they mentioned destroyed because like they're only taking digital art submissions now anyways, but I get I get why it's there. So, yeah, they're just saying, again, like, um, you know, make sure that you have everything tidied up on your end. Um, if you are the writer or the artist, you know, 
everyone has to be on board. Uh, everyone has to be committed to the project. You know, don't submit artwork where you had a falling out with your artist or don't don't submit a story that you didn't write. Um, everyone has to be on board for the project. Um, again, they're not looking for ideas like Star Wars versus Predator. They're not looking for, hey, you guys should pick up this property. Um, it, they're really, as a creator-owned project, these companies are looking for you to have your idea like ready and in fruition, right? I mentioned that like um, earlier, like the six functional pages of artwork, that's great. Like that's, that's proof that your project is like, you know, the standard you're holding your project to. However, what I don't think you should do is just pitch an idea and it's like, here's my proof of concept. I think you'd have a much stronger chance if your art, if your project was already done or that you had a timeline that they could expect it to be finished in. Like the six pages is just to understand like you have your ish together. What it's not really meant to be is like, you know, hey, I just hired someone quickly and I've never done this before. And I'm just like looking like if you're still figuring things out as a, a creative team, that's fine. But I would say, like, it's best to go in with a lot of, like, a lot of proof that you're going to go the distance, right? Um, I was just having a conversation with my friend last night about his his Kickstarter. He shot a three-hour-long movie over the course of two and a half years. But he didn't release the Kickstarter until, like, a full portion of that movie was already, like, shot and edited. And he provided, like, a pretty distinct, like, timeline of, like, how long he expected this to take him. Like there was, there was proof, you know, that things were going to go further than just like, Hey, I have an idea. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if dark horse gives you money to complete your project. I would operate under the assumption that they don't, um, because you're responsible to see your creative project through to being complete. <laughs> so, Anyway, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole there. Log line, one or two sentences. This is the elevator pitch, the most distilled, condensed version of your story possible. From reading a log line, one should be able to determine an idea of who the main character is, what the main character wants or is trying to accomplish, who or what is trying to thwart the main character, and the consequences of failure for the main character. Something like this. It's great that they provide an example. To save the future of mankind, a soldier travels back in time to stop a cyborg from killing the mother of his best friend, the leader of the human resistance. Pretty generic, but, you know, I mean, a similar one might have been, like, Hellboy. Um, you know, uh, a scientist or doctor, you know, um, a paranormal research doctor finds, like, the, the spawn of a demon and raises him to be his own you know, to help fight the forces of evil, um, maybe expand a little bit on that, but like, that's enough to get the idea of like, you know, Hellboy, what Hellboy is. So yeah, as summarized, the log line is really just the elevator pitch, like in one or two sentences, the, the most basic elements of your story. Um, it would behoove you to make sure that this is like a semi-original idea and you're finding an angle that hasn't quite been approached yet even if it's something that's like not entirely original but a new take on an idea right as i said like a superhero but he's the son of satan or or something like that you know um is is like really the way to boil it down the synopsis while the log line is designed to pique the interest of a reader the synopsis serves to satisfy the reader's curiosity by revealing a bit more about who the characters are and some of the complexities of the plot. But the goal here is to keep it short, probably not longer than 300 words for a four to five issue series. Um, this is just like where you're getting a little more into the details. So I'm going to keep using the Hellboy reference and I'm only going to be using the Hellboy movie as reference because I'm not as well read on the comic, but you know, the first movie is like the professor finds Hellboy. He raises him to be his own 
uh, Hellboy is like fighting the forces of darkness and, you know, Rasputin has emerged to try and resurrect an ancient god for his plans of world destruction. Maybe even a little more context than that. But that is like, you know, the paragraph version. So like the log line is two sentences. Now we're talking about more of like a thorough paragraph of like start to finish. And then finally, you know, going on the one, two, three punch here, you have the log line telling, you know, the basic setup of your story, the synopsis giving a little more detail on like what happens in the story, like more about the conflicts, and then the complete outline that's really telling that you know all of the parts of your story. Succinctly tell the entire story, beginning, middle, and end. A short story outline should be no longer than a page. An outline for a multi-issue series or graphic novel should be no longer than a page per issue. Indicate issue breaks where applicable. An outline should say exactly what happens in the story, noting plot and character specifics. Do not leave the resolution of the story in question. So again, so now we had Hellboy is, you know, a superhero who's also the spawn of Satan. Hellboy is a superhero of the Spawn of Satan who uh, has been enlisted to fight supernatural forces and stop Rasputin from resurrecting a demon god. Hellboy is, you know, um, been in the BPRD for a few years and, you know, uh, Abe Sapien is his best friend and, you know, Liz is his love interest and this happens, you know, here's, here's the arc of the story you know the rising action the conflict the fall you know that that's where they're trying to get the understanding that you have all the elements of the story ready i think it's helpful that they give you how much information you should be including and like in my own writing process i've found it very helpful to go back and like do this amount of research with your own story it, it should sound obvious to you that like Obviously, you wrote the story, so you know what happens, but do you? Like, can you, are you intimate with your story enough that you can go back and pull in these references? When I was writing my recent comic book, um, I wrote everything, you know, I wrote everything throughout. I got it all on the page. And then I went back and reread each issue, and I just bulleted out what happened broadly these people were in the scene they talked about this then i made an excel sheet and i found like every time like two characters were together like every time there was like a weaving plot and i revisited all of that and it really helped me like construct things better and to understand like why everything was happening um and to just like really get all of the knowledge of like the characters the motivations when things happen why they happen finding opportunities for like to set up something sooner to have like an outside force influence this or that like <laughs> that that's worthy of a video in itself to talk about like the editing process but you know this um the complete outline you know if you're just gonna write it in one go and uh not edit it and not go to the depth that i just explained you're probably not ready to submit a pitch to Dark Horse Comics. And I don't mean that in a way to discredit anybody. It's just like, take your time and really hone your craft and get to that level of comfort with a project, that level of like professionalism that Dark Horse is going to expect out of someone who is pitching to them. Like, I think they will appreciate that when someone approaches Dark Horse Comics, like, they get, if my little video about how to submit to image got 3,000 views in the last 10 weeks, I can only imagine the amount of submissions these companies are receiving every day. So that's what I mean when I'm like, make sure that when you approach these large cream of the crop publishers, that you are ready and that your project is up to snuff that you think like maybe it could be the next Hellboy, right? And so that's really all I want to say is like 
And if you have questions about like, okay, I'm not ready for that, ask, you know, ask me or ask around. What what can I do to get there? And I'll be happy to make a video that talks about the ways that you can get started. You don't go ha have to go straight to, you know, this large grand scale idea that's ready for the big leagues. Yeah, I really just like that they they give you the context for like how long the outline should be, what it should be per issue, you know, just like making sure you're intimately familiar with the story. Do not leave the resolution of the story in question. This is always great. Like, um, obviously if you're like, um, a proven creator, like I know, like actually in Brian Lee O'Malley's pitch for Scott Pilgrim to Oni, there's, there's still like some questions he hasn't figured out yet, but there's precedent, right? Because he was already like an author who's proven he knows what he's doing and, and can get a completed work out the gate. But, you know, like image says in their their submission guidelines too. like no, no cliffhangers. Like, will this happen? Like they want to know, like if you're trying to sell it on like, you know, uh, like the stereotypical like superhero cartoon, like find out next week. Like that's not what they're interested in. Like we're talking about like peer to peer professional relationships that like you understand your work, you understand like the theme the idea you're trying to communicate, like what the value of it is. Like this goes so much further beyond just like six pages of artwork, right? <laughs> like I'm really trying to give you the idea today, like, and be the barrier between you and these publishers, even though I don't speak for Dark Horse, but I can say confidently as someone who works in a creative industry and, and gets propositioned like this, commonly um they want to know that you are ready for the responsibility that you are asking for you know so i said this earlier in the video but like make sure your idea is as close to the finish as possible and i said this in my other image video but like it's one thing to have a pitch that's like the basics and to be like, here's what I would do. It's another thing to have an idea that's like all, almost ready to go. And all they have to do is put their their stamp, their Dark Horse Comics logo, their Image Comics logo, seal of approval, and use their, you know, their business structure, their retail channel to put your book out there and distribute it, right? That's kind of like the caliber we're talking about. One other thing I want to say about this, though, is that... You shouldn't let my critique here discourage you from doing it anyway. I think that the process of creating a comic book pitch is very valuable. I've done it many times. And I started my own journey trying to create comic books over 10 years ago. I'm working on a comic book today that I started writing 15 years ago in 2009. And I finally feel like I've learned enough to be ready to approach it in the manner that it deserves, right? And it wasn't until like 10 years ago that I started doing this, this area of research, right? What are they looking for? What does it take? And I did my first comic book proposal and I sent it off and I didn't hear back. I sent it to Image, I sent it to Dark Horse, I sent it to Oni, I did it didn't hear back <clears throat> so you know partially wrongly i assumed okay that that project wasn't of interest so i did another proposal and i sent it all off and i didn't hear back but on that project i pushed through i did two full you know comic book floppy comic issues i'm very proud of what i did um you know for multiple reasons i wasn't intimately familiar with the process of making a comic book and so you know, it didn't really go anywhere, but it was enough for me to understand what it takes to to get there. And then now I'm working on a book that, as I've said to you, <laughs> I'm working to do like the full the full trade, if not um, collected work at once. And I want to get it pretty much done on my own ability, and then approach these. Um, these publishers. I think something that's rare is that someone just like comes with an idea that like they have like no, very little proof that they've done anything and they get picked up. 
a lot of people getting published through these creator-owned companies are people who, truthfully, like, they worked at Marvel or DC or, you know, they have some level of precedent or even just they did a smaller book on their own first, like Robert Kirkman did Battle Pope, and then he got Invincible, right? So you're probably not going to get your first ever book picked up in these ways, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it because, like, those, you know, those learning curve items will get you further. So now that I've taken a major detour, uh, we'll get through the rest of the video. Six consecutive pages of art for your story. Consider this the proof of concept for your proposed story. Proposals without samples of completed pages will not be reviewed. Dark Horse wants to see what your story will look like. They need not be the first six pages, but they must be consecutive. Send no more than six pages. If you have additional pages, let us know that they are available upon request. So yeah, again, this is pretty standard. Image requests five pages, Dark Horse requests six. I don't know why. They just want to see an example of functional sequential storytelling that that you have a grasp of this and that, you know, uh, they want to see the quality of the work and the quality of the writing uh, apparent. Say hi to the nice people, Edgar. Oh, yeah. This is my cat, Eddie. He's very happy to be here. Okay, bud, dad has to keep working. Six consecutive pages of artwork. Image asks for five. Dark Horse asks for six. I don't know why there's a difference. Uh, it's really just to see a functional example of your art style, your storytelling, you know, that both of those elements combined are up to the caliber that they want to see, that you're capable of doing it. Um, you know, I would, I would pick like a juicier sequence you know that that actually is like a fun or interesting sequence in your book but everything you did up until this point is probably enough to get the intrigue of the people who are considering these options like challenge yourself in that way to sell them without having them to to read the entire book you know when i was doing character art samples with the artist i started working with i was really just feeling things out <clears throat> but i gave him like ideas of the story and like just sort of the basics like the nuances of the characters and he found them really compelling and interesting and was like i want to know more about this i want to keep working on this and that's like how i got to where we are today that we are working on the first full issue of a book and we're planning to do more with it right these need not be the first six pages um just consecutive so that's good to know I mean perhaps your first six pages are it is where you're establishing your story and so for that I would say it's not a bad idea to do the first six pages um it's probably the ones you've obsessed over the most but that's not a that's not a make or break decision um and then hi Edgar Send no more than six pages. Yeah, again, um, I think if you've done enough groundwork, you know, the editors at Dark Horse will see it. Your, your work will speak for itself. And if they want to see more, I want to see the issue, etc. They'll ask for it. What, what this is asking is not just for the minimum of like, hey, can you give me the idea of a story and show me six pages of what it might look like? Some Some people definitely have the privilege of pitching their books this way, like, Robert Kirkman's pitch for The Walking Dead is like not far off from what I'm describing, but again, he has precedent. And until you have that level of precedent, I would say plan to get your work as far along as you can. Because like if Dark Horse says no, but like you feel like you're ready for it, why should that stop you, right? Go ahead and make your book and find a way to distribute it. And you know, if you have to do it just one issue at a time, do it that way. But like you know, don't don't limit yourself just because a publisher said, you know, didn't respond to your submission, right? Last but not least, they ask, do not send character profiles, reviews of your past work, screenplays, novels, or other long prose work. So, yeah, I'm, sh again, um, I'm sure people are sending these people thousands of odd ideas every day and week. Um, character profiles right it's it's not an example of something that is like coming to fruition it's it's just like too too loose right 
they they want they're a publisher of comic books that's what they're looking for comic books reviews of your past work makes sense like and if you are ever going to use reviews make sure they're from like credible sources and like you know you have like accolades but again i don't think there's 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 no level of kind words about your work that dark horse is interested in uh screenplays novels or other long prose works again um they're looking to do comic books for whatever reason they will accept artwork but they will not accept (laughs) um writing on its own that's fine you know if that's what they're asking for that's what they're asking for um i wouldn't i wouldn't abandon those rules because it's just going to make it seem like you don't know their process and then they will move on from you before they even you have like a real chance to make an impression right so just do it by the standard method that's being asked for ow and no biting um delivery instructions send all components of your proposal email as attachments link to download sites or websites will no longer be accepted please send the sign um Please send the signed submission agreement as a separate attachment in your email. Send proposals to dh sub proposals at darkhorsecomic at darkhorse.com. So that's really it. Um, you know, I'll say it one more time. Making a comic book pitch is a fairly simple process. You just have to make, you know. Uh, let's let's reference image again real quick if you haven't watched my other video a cover letter a synopsis a cover mock-up and you know five pages of artwork like these are very similar processes I think that you should if you are submitting to multiple publishers you may as well follow their guidelines anyway and challenge yourself to meet those standards a bit and do things the way that's being requested just so that you're not like excluding yourself from consideration but yeah these are very simple asks you know the basic idea of your story the outline the functional examples of artwork um but oh hi ed but what i think again is important to note is that if you're just making new ideas you know every month with like a new artistic team crazy man am i allowed to finish my video am i allowed are you gonna bite me oh bite eddie bites me um <laughs> this cat's crazy um the basic asks for a comic book proposal and submission it's not a very tall order on the outside it's you know the overview of your story the synopsis uh, the, the examples of the artwork. Um, but in theory, someone could come up with a new proposal every couple of weeks and send in a new idea until, until they inevitably say yes. But, um, and while I think you should do, you should do pitch work and, you know, make, make, make a pitch or two just to test out this process. Right. But like, what I think is going to be strongest is when you have something that's like, you know, to the standard of like, I understand what it takes to get from an idea to a 128 page graphic novel and then get there. Right. That's what I think is different. And that's what I think these people are looking for is not just a good idea and not just good artwork because there's plenty of it, but it's, having the like professionalism to know what it takes to get that book done. Um, that That's really where I think you would make a big impression on an editor or a publisher. So I know that's probably like a little vague, but um, that's just my advice. I could be wrong about this. I'm not a professional. I'm not a published comic book author. So take it for what it is. Um, but yeah, guys, if, if there's anything I touched on here that you'd like to see in a follow-up video, again, the last video about these submission guidelines, they've, they've been very popular and I know I'm adding a lot of information here that like probably doesn't seem like the most relevant of what you're looking for, but I hope that this information is resonating with people. It took me a long time to learn some of these nuanced details. And so, I hope it helps you in your process. 
Uh, thank you for watching, you guys. Again, if you got any questions or comments, let me know. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm really in encouraged by the amount of people that are watching and engaging and asking questions. I think this is so awesome. So uh, find me on Instagram at Robbie Puzz, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.